Hello, everyone. This is Christopher Mick again with the Hudson Area Public Library. We are doing actually this is going to be the last one uh, for the summer. We're taking a summer break from doing our our interview series that we've been doing for about a year now. So this is a, a final installment uh, for the summer for the Women in STEAM interview series because we're coming up in July. We've got all our virtual camps and book clubs and things going and people are traveling. So we think we're going to take a short uh, hiatus from doing interviews the rest of the summer. If there's demand for these, uh, you know, in the fall, we'd be happy to pick them back up uh, and do that again. But I'm going to get right over to our, our special guest for our last uh, interview here. Uh, her name's Harriet Hunt, and she is coming to speak to us about her uh, kind of experiences in uh, education and with getting into STEM and where she's at now with things. And I uh, thought it'd be a great last interview uh, to wrap up our summer session here. So I'm going to turn it right over to you, Harriet, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Harriet Hunt. I'm a senior studying aerospace engineering at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and I'm a 2021 Brooke Owens Fellow currently working at Northrop Grumman as a uh, systems engineer. That's awesome. How long have you been doing the internship? Uh, I think about five weeks now. <laughs> okay and does that go through the summer or is that a year-long internship? How long does that go? Yeah it'll go till uh, mid-August. Okay excellent. Well, and I'm excited to speak to you because uh, you've got kind of an interesting story on, well, maybe we can talk about your education, kind of kick through that. When, do you remember the kind of first inkling you had that what we now call STEM, that your word wasn't always used, you know, it was just doing, being interested in science or interested in math, but can you remember like the first thing that kind of sparked your interest in, in uh, pursuing this? So um, since my parents are both uh, engineers, um, they always kind of pushed me to, you know, get into the honors math classes and, uh, you know, so when I was in high school and I first took, um, well, I was in my honors math track and when I had, um, I call it my honors pre-calculus, mm -hmm. um, I guess my teacher was uh, someone who I like really connected with and I really enjoyed that class and made me really passionate about math. And that's when I realized that, oh, I can actually do well in math if I like it. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of got me started going that way. And then when I took calculus the next year, I really enjoyed it. It was my favorite class of all time in high school. So I thought um, I'd take a research and design class, which is like for, it's like sort of an engineering class for high school students and uh, got to build really cool things like a trebuchet, a crane, a little autonomous robot and like, then that class definitely sold it. I knew immediately I had to be an engineer. <laughs> awesome. Well, you talked about a little bit. I was going to ask, you know, did you have any, you know, mentors along the way? You kind of touched on one there, but were there people that kind of influenced you to, to keep you on this track or inspire you to keep going with it? Yeah, well, definitely my parents, um, when I was in high school, uh, pushed me and uh, supported my goals going into engineering. And then when I got to college, uh, immediately there were some upperclassmen girls who were definitely key in uh, keeping me going the first year of college which is really tough as it is for most people and having their guidance and uh, their support you know reminded me like that I can keep doing it they you know if I failed a test they were there to remind me that they failed tests too and I'd look at them and say well you are so like perfect and inspiring to me and I want to be just like you and yeah. Awesome. Well, and you're talking about your current internship and, and I know from your social media <clears throat> posts, excuse me, that you've done some past, you know, really cool internships at different places. Do you have kind of a rough, you know, game plan on where you see yourself in five years or are you just kind of going with the flow of, of the internships and the opportunities that come up? So I'm currently working on kind of grad school applications. So in five years, I hope to either like have uh, completed a master's and then potentially uh, be looking into a PhD. So um, I'm right now in the middle of, you know, exploring all my grad school options. So sure. um, I'm hoping to do that before I enter the workforce. Okay, excellent. Well, and, and there's a, a photo of you that's been circulating around the SciComm you know, webs and stuff like that, which uh, is kind of blown up a little bit, which I wanted to speak to you about because you uh, posted a photo a while back on on somebody telling you I forget what level of school it was, but that that you would never work 
at NASA, you would never be, uh, you know, doing what you're doing now, and that that really kind of fired you up to uh, to prove them wrong and, and to show what you could do. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, since I always loved space and kind of astronomy, when I realized that I wanted to be an engineer, you know, my goal was NASA all throughout high school. So I wore this big oversized NASA sweatshirt almost every single day. So everyone knew that I wanted to work at NASA. And uh, of course I was in this um, honors chemistry class and uh, I was in this lab group and, you know, I would always talk about like my telescope. Oh, look at these pictures I took of the moon last night. And like, I can't wait to someday work at NASA. And uh, you know, this kid very, you know, annoying kid <laughs> said to me that, uh, I would never work at NASA and it was just a stupid dream and uh, you know I never forgot that I mean he probably doesn't even remember saying that to me but I never forgot that and then uh, freshman year all freshman year when I was working on my NASA interviews and kind of pushing myself to get into my first internship there uh, I would keep that in the back of my head you know oh like this is my opportunity to prove I'm wrong and actually achieve my dream of all of high school, my dream working at NASA. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and, and I, that speaks a lot to, <clears throat> excuse me, why I kind of even started this interview series was because I was overhearing conversations like that. I get to go to uh, almost all the classrooms in Hudson here in the school district, and I'm presenting to all the third and fourth graders. And I have a, there's a rocketry club I established at the middle school, and there was an after school space club at the high school. And so I see all these students at all these different grade levels. And I'd overhear conversations like that on kind of uh, guys being inadvertently or in passing, maybe they're not meaning it in a serious way, but making kind of derogative, you know, comments and, uh, and the like. And that always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I was always trying to promote that anybody could, could work in this area and even to promote it, that it didn't have to be just people that were into wanting to be an astronaut or a pilot or even an engineer per se, but people that were into, you know, nutrition or into coding or, you know, cause they needed people to design VR environments when they're going to test something out before they, they build it for real. And they need people to work out, you know, the diet and the exercise programs for the astronauts to keep them healthy on this. So there's all these different, you know, ways you could access, you know, working at NASA or like, you know, aerospace companies. And it didn't have to just be these very narrow fields of things. So I'm always trying to, you know, expand the bubble and, and open up the tent and that everybody can be in there. So I wasn't a big fan of uh, when I've heard those kind of comments on that. I, and in talking to people at different phases of their career, I, I was interested to ask you where you are now, having gone through, uh, you know, some college and some internships and that, what, what's your view or feeling on, um, for women, you know, representation or discrimination issues, like where you're at now? How are you taking that? Yeah, um, of course, I think or I like to hope that it's getting better. Um, in the workplace, I haven't experienced it as much. Everyone has been pretty supportive. And especially during internships, they, you know, make you go through the training and then uh, listen to like speakers who talk about that kind of issue. Um, of course, it's been hard working in uh you know, when I was a software engineer intern, my groups were mostly men. So um, there's still like a lack of balance there. But, um, you know, sometimes at university, of course, people still make some comments, um, especially I know me and a couple other girls in the aerospace department have received comments saying, oh, you only got that interview because you're a girl or, you know, they're hiring you because they need the diversity hire or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so that definitely is still real and happening. Um, there are some professors who, for lack of a better term, are old fashioned and uh, can t tend to say some offensive things, I think, without realizing it. Um, so it's definitely still happening. Um, I think this year there's uh, more girls uh, entering the aerospace department than have been in the previous like five years. So that's cool. good, I think. Yeah. Um, it's going to be like the biggest class. Usually it's only around like 130 kids and this time there's like way more. So awesome. hopefully we're, you know, slowly breaking that standard of, you know, less women and that will help 
you know, kind of push those kind of comments away. Is there anything uh, in all the experiences you've had that, that you think we, you know, educators could be doing a better job of, you know, something that would have been, been helpful to you that, that wasn't available? Um, you know, as far as opportunities, is it, is it the programs at schools or the internship opportunities or going back, you know, earlier school, like school clubs, or is there anything that you, you know, can think about that if they were only doing a better job at that, or they did more outreach for that, that would have been helpful to me or, or anything like that? I definitely think more um, outreach to younger girls, um, pushing them to join clubs, uh, like after school rocketry clubs, or even, um, you know, in uh, high school, I feel like there wasn't enough push for girls to sign up for the research and design class or sign up for the electronics class. Um, and even when I was in the research and design class, it's kind of funny because uh, there were like 27 boys and three girls and we all just kind of sat in the back together <laughs> and we're one group of girls. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, I was volunteering this past semester with an after school rocketry club for fourth and fifth graders. And okay. uh, I love to see that it was like 50, 50 girls and boys. And, you know, when I was in fifth grade, I didn't do, I didn't like learn about any engineering clubs or science clubs. So I think doing that outreach at a really early age in like elementary school, pushing them to, you know, explore those interests is key. Excellent, excellent. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking the, the time today because, uh, like I said, I, you kind of embody the whole reason why I pitched out because when everything went into lockdown, you know, for COVID and we couldn't do our uh, girls in STEAM camp and girls who code, you know, a chapter we were going to have at the library, I felt really bad that uh, there were some girls who were excited for those programs and we couldn't offer them. And then so in conversations on what are we going to do for for trying to do programming or outreach or think outside the box uh, when things cap I kind of pitched well maybe I could you know do some interviews and post those and then the girls could just access them you know whenever it works for them and we could promote it to the parents on the the library Facebook page and so they could share it you know with their their kids and that and it's been hugely popular and, and uh, it, everybody's been so kind on uh, all these people I reached out to, to ask to interview you know uh, uh, to a person said yes and would always make it you know find a way to make it work out and uh, do it so I was really kind of bowled over by the great response and how everybody was was willing to uh, make it happen and do that so uh, I think this is a, a testament to uh, uh, the power that that these interviews have had and, and people like you sharing your story I think just uh, hopefully inspires other girls in our area you know here in Hudson Wisconsin that they get to see this and uh, and maybe they'll they'll take a chance on an after school club or an opportunity and uh, and do that because uh, I think it's uh, it's really amazing to hear these stories you know from you and to see the amazing things that you're doing you know on social media you know the things that you post and share with uh, with your experiences it's really inspiring to me so I hope that that percolates through to all the the people that can access these. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> well, yeah, and I wish you luck with all your future endeavors. I, I uh, we follow you on Facebook, and it'll be great to see. Uh, your next steps and all that. So we'd love to check in with you again, uh, maybe in a few years and, and talk to you about what you're doing, doing then. Yeah, definitely. Thank Excellent. you for having me. Yeah. Good luck with everything. Have a good summer.